All right, hello. I know it's been several years since I put anything up regularly on this channel, but I wanted to record this um, kind of special video, at, at least right now. Hopefully I get back into recording more of this stuff. For the 1993 International Summer Consumer Electronics Show, um, I am sending this guidebook off to the Video Game History Foundation soon and wanted to just flip through it one more time while I have it in hand, like a, a scanned PDF is fine to look through, but having it in hand, you know, there's always something special about actually having it. Um, they were talking on a recent episode as of this recording about uh, not having a lot of stuff from CES and, and being really into the directories um, with contact information for all of these companies to try and track down who to even talk to. So we'll get to that, um, but I contacted Frank and asked if 92 or 93, those were the two years that I got to go to CES in Chicago, um, if they needed either of those guides, and he said, definitely don't have this one. So I've been dredging up e uh, CES, I'm sorry if I already said E3, CES memories, and I've, I've wanted to do this for years also, capture some of those memories, and hopefully looking through this book, I have some scans over here on a little laptop of some other stuff that I used to have, but I scanned before I got rid of. So hopefully this will jog some memories, especially once we get into the map. Um, and I can finally document what I remember of being at the show. I believe I would have been about 15 when this show happened on June 6th, 1993. Uh, I have, I scanned my ticket stub um, and I'll link below. I'm going to put all the 93 stuff that I have on archive.org. So there'll be a, a folder there, or a section there of all this stuff that I've had scanned for a while. Um, my ticket stub, it was $8 in advance. So it only took $8 and a road trip to visit some of our family in Chicago. Uh, and then they dropped me off, me and a friend off at the convention center uh, that morning. And I imagine since there were no cell phones, they just said, meet back here at 3 p.m. or something. And that's how we got into CES two years in a row. And it was a consumer thing. Like, obviously, you can buy tickets for it. It wasn't press only. Um, but I believe the Nintendo booth, thinking about it, I don't remember any Nintendo anything. I'm just going to start flipping through these. I'm not stopping on every single uh, article, but we'll um, we'll take a look through the, the gaming walking tour and the maps. Um, of all my memories from either CES. I don't remember any Nintendo stuff, and I feel like they probably had that sectioned off just for press, or the line to get into that section was so long, we didn't even try to wait for it. Uh, here's where we'll be focusing, the video game section and multimedia, so you know it was the 90s. Um, I believe all the ads that are in here, like this Mario Paint one, already exist online. Most of those were published elsewhere. Uh, this is a very important page, the directory of all the companies by category, audio, visual, video games, mobile electronics, all the uh, the vendors that were there, which I think now, even the last 10 years of CES, uh, this number would be way smaller. Um, it's very sad how uh, trade show stuff has shrunk. Uh, and here's our good close-up maps of the actual booths. I was hopeful that they would have this one. So let me turn this briefly. We'll come back to this page and I'll zoom in a little bit more. But here's Nintendo taking up almost a quarter of the show floor. Sega taking up 20%, 15% maybe. Uh, Konami, Acclaim, Accolade, Electronic Arts, Sony, Compton. Everybody loves Compton's games. Virgin Games, STD Entertainment, Cygnosis, Turbo Technologies, in a very small booth for a number three console on the market. That's pretty sad. Um, and I, I'm not sure if this big section of Sega was press only and they just had like kiosks out here that we as children could walk up to and play things. That is definitely where I have the most memories of. Um, I really don't remember specifically. So I'm hoping, looking up some of these numbers, that correlate with the smaller booths. I'm hoping that that jogs some more memories. And I think this is the multimedia area that they were pointing out. Let's see. Yeah, because I think that just says stairs. I think this is the multimedia section. None of these are labeled right now. Um, home, 
home office computing pavilion. Okay, well, we'll come back to these and look. Um, apparently, Panasonic, wait, wait, the 3DO company was there, and uh, Philips with the CDI were there. I do not remember stopping at any of that stuff, which is a shame because that's some of the stuff I find most fascinating now. Um, there's a, a welcome from President Bill, William Bill Clinton. I don't know what his middle name is. Um, still has the info card in here. Uh, and also the governor and mayor, not to be outshined. And from the group vice president, EIA Consumer Electronics Group. And the board of directors. So, let's see. What else can I talk about till we get to the video game section? Uh, these were the two years that me and my friend got to go. I believe it was it was me and him. I, I don't actively remember him being there. Uh, some of these pictures from of the booths from the show floor are, are helpful too. It kind of gets me head back in that place. Man, can you imagine when they used to have to advertise for laser pointers? There's some amazing, amazing technology history in here. These always were my favorite speakers for red wine. Laser discs. Awesome. Uh, I totally forgot about the Virtual Vision headset. Is this Sony? The virtual era has begun. Stay tuned. Virtual Vision. Available at Homaker Schlemmer and Shutterbug. So you know, Homaker Schlemmer. Proprietor of only leading edge products that will definitely stick around. Man Watching Mariners Battle A's. I remember that thing being like a hot potential VR thing, uh, VR, or just being able to like watch TV um, in like surround theater style. Here we go, the video game walking tour. You can tell because there's a big muscle man trying to break a Game Gear in half. All right, so the product overview. I read through, I read, yeah, I read through this the other day, just kind of trying to kickstart some other memories and that's where CDI and 3DO are mentioned. Big Jurassic Park um, set up there. And that's one of the things that I remember. They had the, um, let's see, somewhere on the show floor in here, they had the, uh, what is that Jeep? The Not the Jeep, but the Ford Explorer, the, the actual ride vehicle, one of the prop vehicles from the movie that they rode around the park on in the beginning. Uh, they had one of those roped off, and I remember, I don't even know that in June of 93, I forgot to look up when Jurassic Park came out, but I don't think I had even seen it at that point. Um, but I remember loving that truck. Maybe it had. I feel like I knew what it was. Uh, awesome uh, TTI Turbo Duo ads. I love the style of their ads later on. Uh, Konami was featuring Lethal Enforcers on the Sega CD, Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighter, Rocket Knight Adventures, Zombie Ate My Neighbors, more Jurassic Park. Um, Acclaim was there with, uh, they had the home versions of Mortal Kombat. Um, they gave out a lot of the booths since there weren't digital press kits, um, since CD-ROM was even still relatively new. Um, they still had like paper material. So there were a lot of one sheets. I'm just going to keep flipping because I'm not going to point out every single thing that's in here. Man, remember all of Accolade's hits? Like Bubsy <laughs> and Sports. It was definitely most of their lineup there. It was not up my alley. Uh, there's Steven Spielberg's The Dig. Tour Tips, Fast Facts. Uh, a Sega Seal of Quality ad, an Ocean ad, come see our booth. Um, the so it's sort of along the the lines of these ads, like saying with the bur the booth number in it, um, they would hand out uh, one sheets or sell sheets. I always heard them called one sheets before sell sheets, but basically just product info, a, a little bit like an ad like this, but with a little more info for each title. And so one of them they had was uh, Mortal Kombat, and it was just an ad 
um, for September 13th, 1993, Mortal Monday. On the back of these, though, uh, it had an offer to meet the stars of Mortal Kombat live in person, along with game designers John Tobias and Ed Boon. So they were there. I do not remember seeing them or a uh, fervor around anybody. In, in my memory, I don't know if I just remember the beginning before it got really crowded or what, um, but I, I don't remember it being very hard to move around, even though there there is talk back in that video game section, the video game walking tour, um, where they say, get there early. They're, they Even back then, they were saying, get there early, get in line for what you want to see. Um, this is a lot of what I remember. I wish they had some pictures of the video game section of the the booths and kiosks, um, but I remember the big exposed conference floor ceiling, weird carpeting around everything. It was a lot more open than um, than E3 had become. Oops. Get your laser detector. What do they call those things? Radar laser detectors. Defy the police. Home audio. Is this home audio? And then a lot of booth type stuff like this that's uh just looks like you know thrown together real quick out of plexiglass and particle board to make a booth all right here we go video mobile electronics software showcase oh that's everyone who was in the innovation software showcase acclaim was there with crusty super fun house beyond games had battle wheels for the atari lynx broderbun software had where in the USA is Carmen San Diego? Turbo Technologies had Lords of Thunder. Uh, that was a separate section, I, I think, that was innovations. Here we go. Exhibitor directory. This is all still in frame, I hope. That looks pretty legible. Unfortunately, this doesn't have contact names. It doesn't even have phone numbers. It's just addresses, which, as a kid, a lot of what I did was mail companies whose games I liked and bug them, bug their poor marketing or PR people, <laughs> whoever had to sit there and read through the stupid kid's letters about how you should make Sonic go faster. Uh, so here's our guidebook again. That's all the pages. Let's find that map. Looking for the map. All right, now let me see if I can zoom in for you all. Oh, the zoom on this is uh, interesting. Okay, I'm sure that won't look super great, but that'll give you an idea. Um, so what I remember, so we would have come in this way. And so it was like all the way to the back, I'm sure there were big Nintendo and Sega signs dangling over top of everything. Um, unfortunately, I really wish I had a camera, but I was not a big like film camera guy. I really wish I had some photos though. I feel like there might be a couple somewhere at home. Um, I definitely remember stopping at the Sony Electronic Publishing because I have a flyer I believe is from there. I vaguely remember standing and playing um, Rocket Knight Adventure I don't remember if Castlevania Bloodlines or anything would have been there. The majority of my memories are really back in what I'm guessing is over here, this Sega booth that would have been for the public. Or maybe this was for the public and this was smaller press area. It was a really, in my kid mind anyways, it was really spread out. And they had um, consoles, they had like a Genesis with like a cage over it. and So you couldn't get to the cartridge. And then just the controller sitting there on a, a countertop, you know, just by itself, plenty of room around it. Um, they might have had some of the one sheets, you know, like lined up that somebody came and refilled every once in a while. Um, I remember standing there and playing Streets of Rage 2. I remember like um, might have been several like spokes like a. Uh, like a wall, and then the, the front and the back side had kiosks that wrapped around, and then they had um, off to the side, like maybe some cross-shaped um, 
kiosks. So you'd have like, you know, four stations on each one. I remember a smaller section there standing and playing Street Fighter II Championship Edition. And, and as a Sega kid, wanting to really love it, but still going, ah, that's not so great compared to the Super NES version. But it's got extra stuff, right? Um, I remember playing Socket. I think, do I have a one sheet here from Socket? Yes, I definitely picked up the one sheet for Socket. For some reason, I thought that was a super hot game. Um, most of these I three hole punched and kept in a CES binder for a long time, and then foolishly got rid of a lot of this stuff. A lot more than I have scanned, unfortunately. So I don't remember if the, the one sheets were at each you know, each kiosk that you would stand and play at, or if there was like a table that had them all laid out for people to grab. I definitely remember they had, this was the, the 1993, I forget which quarter, issue of Sega Visions uh, that had Jurassic Park on the cover. They just had millions of them. For the longest time, I had like 20 copies of that. Um, we had, you know, big, like, if you've been to E3 or seen people's swag bags from the early 2000 years of E3, it was like that. We had a big bag, one one or two or three each of us, and just grabbed everything that we could and threw it in there. So I, I had tons of those, that one specific issue of Sega Visions for so many years. So let me flip back. This is not the best way to do this. I should have had this page like printed out alongside the exhibitor list, so video games. I guess we're still zoomed in. I'll uh, catch some of that. Psygnosis. I think they were. They had their name on there. Lucas Arts. I was not a big uh, computer or PC kid, so I, I'm sure I skipped over a lot of that. I just went straight for Sega. And like I said, I don't remember being able to get into the Nintendo booth to see or touch anything. I don't even have scans of anything. Uh, Turbo Technologies, I'm sure I, I picked up a ton of their flyers because they had the awesome, like, all-white flyers for the Turbo Duo. It just looked great. Um, I should have some of those scans up, too. I think I have those separate from the other E3 stuff. Uh, Enix, I probably whizzed past... There's a lot of peripheral makers in here, too, and I remember stopping to see I have one ad flyer here. Can I go back like this, or you're not going to work that way? Um, let me go back to the map. If you happen to catch any of those numbers and you wanted to compare on the map while I'm rambling here, I have something from Tyco called the Power Plug. Uh, just a big, it was a fold-out style cell sheet. Make any controller the ultimate weapon. And this video game console to controller, so you plug your controller into it and then plug it into the console. Uh, and there's a thrash button on it. There's a pro button on it, so we were already into eSports. Uh, and it has their rollout of, of TV and print ads and the list of Genesis and NES games that supported it. Let's see, the rest of those we saw. I had a couple Canico ads. Um, or, I'm not sure if it was an ad. I mean, it says on it Canico ads, but I think they were printed out like a sell sheet. Uh, I'm not sure where Canico is on this map. I'm sure they're one of these tiny little tables around the edges. And one other thing I was going to say, I remembered seeing at the Sega booth, um, we couldn't get into it, but they did have the Sega VR headset there. And it was a big black structure that they had built, and they had the the uh, that classic image. If you look it up, you'll almost certainly see the white mannequin head with it with the headset strapped on. We'll see it here in in a second, actually, um, in like in a lighted display case on the outside of where they were doing the demos. And the this guidebook says that they would be doing public demos, but I believe they they either said no kids were allowed. Uh, which was probably a good idea, thinking about it now, or it, it ended up being a closed press thing because it didn't look very good. Um, but I remember a lot of people walking out of there holding their heads, um, not not just from hearing about you know the stories of it giving people headaches. I really think that's a 
vivid memory that I actually have of people holding their skulls, leaving that booth. So let me just flip open that video game section here as a backdrop. Not the acclaim section. This is probably the best page. Yeah, definitely not that. Um, some of the stuff, there there was some swag, there was some free stuff, like all those issues of Sega Vision that they were just giving away. They did have some other tchotchke stuff. I remember some pens and some cups, but I picked up a lot of pins like this. Let's see how close I can get. Era the Acrobat Sunsoft pin, and they're just full lapel pins, typical kind. Uh, this one is enamel without the plasticky wax over top of it, um, but this one, this one doesn't look faded. Um, some of the other ones I have, even from years later, are very faded. Um, this is another one. There's a press, not a press kit, but a uh, a flyer that I have. Um, it should be in the archive.org collection uh, for Beauty and the Beast Sunsoft. I think that was Sunsoft. Had um, two games. They had a Beast version for boys, obviously, and a Bell version for girls, obviously. And so along with the press kit, or whatever it is, the flyer, uh, they also had these enamel pins, which are actually copyright Disney. Wow. Uh, yeah, because these don't specifically say... I don't know if these were park pins or what. Now that I think about it, they don't say Sunsoft on them. They're not specifically for that game, but they, they were definitely giving them out alongside it. Yeah, it's got a Disney logo on the little bag, so wow. It's maybe doubly valuable. And then the one that I'm most happy that I still have... Like I was saying, here's the uh, the Sega VR guy. Oh, and there's so much reflection on it. And whatever it is about, like you can see the uh, like the plastic or the wax or whatever it is that they put over these enamel pins, it always turns these things so orange. This used to be uh, solid white. Oh, the light is not adjusting very well there. Yeah. But this thing was awesome. It was awesome to see that headset in a display. Uh, but this thing was just such a mess. So, I think... Oh, oh, the other memory that I have. Sorry. <laughs> the other memory I have from the Sega booth, uh, so that would have been back in this way, um, was playing Sylphid. The, uh... Where is it? <sighs> this game. Sylphid. You know what? I'm still zoomed in. Let me zoom out. Uh, Sylphid on Sega CD was there, and it's it's one of the only times that I've ever seen at CES or E3 a demo where they had a pair of headphones set up. Like, they were really into the idea of the audio in this game. Enhanced graphics and sound exclusively for Sega CD. So they they handed me the controller, and then they handed me a pair of headphones to put on. And it was a great experience. Obviously, I bought this game because of that great experience. I could actually hear it on the show floor, um, which is amazing, right? Like, why don't they do that more often? Um, so, unfortunately, it did not... Whoops, my cord got in the way. Uh, did not jog a whole lot of other memories, but I've definitely remembered some of that in just the last few days looking at all this stuff. So so that's, without getting it mixed up with possibly 1992 stuff, that is what I remember of CES 93. Um, hopefully that's all pretty accurate, and I hope this was a cool look at this guidebook, which one I'll be in the hands of the Video Game History Foundation. So thanks for watching, and hopefully, I hope to be back with more stuff like this soon.